Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to today's discussion about the Schwab US Dividend ETF, trading under the ticker symbol SCHD. So, SCHD holds a significant appeal to retail investors and online communities due to its combination of high yield, low exposure, and very reasonable fees. It provides us a pretty diversified dividend portfolio with good quality stocks in a single click, making it a very preferred choice in the market. In recent years, as the job market has become more uncertain than ever, and that inflation has become, you know, one of the main reasons why people can no longer afford uh, the bare minimum. In this time of uncertainties, it has become essential for us to secure a better financial futures for ourselves and by ourselves. And to achieve this, it's very important to identify stable revenue streams that can distribute dividends and to provide a shield against the market volatilities, against the inflation that is going around, and also, if possible, to give you good yields. So, for many investors, SCHD has been considered as a very good opportunity to fulfill this goal. It goes beyond being just another uh, dividend ETF, like there are so many in the market, often regarded as a safe haven by both retail and institutional investors. It is known for delivering stable and growing dividends, and SCHD stands out as one of the largest and most diversified dividend ETFs in the market, maintaining its popularity. So in today's video, we will delve into the comprehensive analysis of SDHD to help you to determine whether it merits a place in your investment portfolio. Now, before the video continues, I just want to take a moment to appreciate and to thank you for coming to my channel and to click on my video and to hope that you will enjoy your stay and to take something away from my content. If you like what you see, please consider to like, subscribe, and to check out my channel for playlists of other companies that I also cover. So with that being said, I hope that you're going to enjoy my analysis, and let's get started. So over the past few trading sessions, SCHD's price fluctuated within the range of around like $80 or so, reaching a high of $79.55, and a low of $79.33. In other words, it doesn't really move up by much, but it doesn't really go down by much. Hence the stability and the safety that many of us are looking for. It continues a stable uh, trend, like edging upward, while staying in the lower end of that channel. Over the past five days, SCHD has shown a continuation of this previously mentioned upward trend, with prices decreasing by approximately 0.3%. The ETF has experienced steady growth, particularly following March 27th, while the increase is, of course, small, modest. It signifies positive momentums are very much on the run. And the 30 days trend shows us a much more clearer pattern of higher highs and higher lows, with a support level established around $78. Like, the price increased by around 1% during that period of time, which is significant for a dividend ETF like SCHD, and also consistent with its historical performances. Looking back over the past six months, SCHD has demonstrated a consistent uh, bullish trend with prices increasing by almost 14%. This sustained upward movement reflects investors' confidence into the ETF's underlying assets quality and the investment approach. The significant growth over that period of time highlights SEHD's ability to deliver favorable returns to investors seeking exposure to dividend-paying stocks. Recent trading volume data also provides further insights into SCHD's short-term price actions. It's very stable as well, with a recent volume of around 3 million, slightly below the average of 3.5 to 4 million shares. It would suggest a relatively stable level of trading activity while edging upward. So overall, like the recent price actions of SCHD has shown that this ETF is overall bullish, just like it's been bullish for probably its entire history, really, characterized by a slow burn, but very consistent growth. This upward momentum would suggest that the ETF may continue to climb in the short term, 
especially if the interest rates remain low. Lower interest rates would generally make dividend paying stocks more attractive to investors seeking income, which could further fueling the SEHD's already ongoing ascent. So really what we're looking at here is that the short term price action reflects its performance over the recent periods and indicates a trend of moderate to significant growth. Now, the prices have steadily increased over the past 30 days and six months. It's a very resilient stock with great potentials that can favor returns to investors. The recent trading volume remains stable, and the bullish price action suggests that SEHD is on its way to much, much higher levels if we give it enough time. On the other hand, the options activities surrounding surrounding like SEHD has always shown significant interest on both sides, meaning not just a question of put or calls, but both, slightly favoring the calls. What this means is that, generally speaking, the market sentiment believes that SEHD is going upward. Now, if they were to favor puts, it would mean that they believe that there will be a price dip, at least in the short term. Now, options are very useful tools because they can give us additional revenue streams, hedge the risks, or give calculated and time like time sensitive uh, exposure to any stock or ETF. And in that regard, um, they're pretty useful in telling us what is the ongoing sentiment. Of course, we have to remember not because everyone believes that it's going to go in one way, that it's going to necessarily go that way. The self-fulfilling prophecy has its limits here. And when it comes to like crown wisdom, um, sometimes in, in the stock market, it's pretty much the other way around. The minority is right, and the majority is really wrong. Anyway, so I would say that the options activities around SEHD shows us that the prevailing market sentiment is bullish. Now, with that being said, there will always be a lot of put options around because a lot of institutions, they want to hedge their long positions. And this is why we see a lot of them. And also because, you know, after like more than a decade of consistent growth, at some point, we can argue that it's going to stop growing at the same pace. But that's not really what has happened so far. So we have yet to see whether this is going to happen uh, like going forward. So SEHD is an exchange-traded fund ETF that was initially launched back in 2011, so 13 years ago, and it offers investors an exposure into a very diversified portfolio of US-based dividend-paying stocks. Since its inception, it has garnered a lot of attention from investors because of its attractive features and performance metrics. So, as of the latest data, SEHD has an AUM, so assets under management, of around $56 billion, indicating its popularity and confirming, really, its popularity amongst investors seeking exposure to dividend-paying stocks within the U.S. stock market. This substantial AUM reflects the confidence that investors have placed into SEHD as a reliable source of revenue yield. One of the standout features of SEHD is its very low expense ratio, currently set at around 0.06%. This low expense ratio is highly appealing to investors as it helps minimizing the drag on returns over time, allowing investors to retain a larger portion of their investment gain. But I mean, and let's face it, another reason why it's so low is because it's not actively managed. In other words, people just blindly buy them and pile them up over time. This is what they do. So it's not, you know, there's no um, active analysis on these assets. But I'll tell you what, it might be better than if they actively pursued um, like different active strategies and so on, because there's no indication that active, um, actively managed funds 
aren't necessarily better performers compared to like the passive ones. Uh, case in point, you know, Vanguard or Schwab in this case. So the yield offered by SEHD is yet another attractive feature for income oriented investors currently standing at a, around like 3.5 to 4 percent. This yield would represent an annual income generated by the portfolio's dividend paying stocks relative to the fund's share price. The consistent income streams provided by those various companies can be very appealing to those seeking reliability, stability, and also cash flows. One very noticeable feature of SCHD's performance is its price appreciation since the inception. On average, it has experienced a yearly price increase of around 10%. Remember that I said over the past like 30 days, it increased by 1%? Well, that is considered significant because on a yearly basis, historically speaking, and we're talking about a very good run for SEHD in a very, f under some very favorable like um, market conditions because the QE has run during this entire period of time, propping up like asset prices across the board. Now, the safety in numbers approach is definitely a good advantage of SDHD's portfolio, including a substantial number of companies, all large caps, and the diversity in terms of like sectors acts as a protective layer, helping to mitigate the impact of single sectors or companies uh, when like the market wing turns. And comparing SHD to the S&P 500 reveals also like some pretty interesting insights. Both includes many of the same companies, but SHD's focus is on the dividend paying capacity instead of say purely growth potentials. And because of this, there are some resemblance and some differences. S&P 500 has a lot of companies that don't really pay out dividends, but with high potentials, whereas for um, for SCHD, it's a bit of both. It has a lot of companies with large caps. In other words, they tend to rise uh, with the sea level, really. And also, they're concentrated on the cash flows capacity of those companies. So they are like a safer version of S&P 500. So for people who want to have both yields, growth, like stock appreciations, and also dividends, um, then SEHD is a pretty good place to look at. And the price action of SEHD can therefore be justified by considering the increased capital allocation to equities over the past 15 years. As more investors recognize the importance of dividend paying stocks in their portfolios, the demand for ETFs like SEHD has risen over time. The fund's performance is also influenced by like the individual success of the companies within the portfolio, further emphasizing the connection between price movements and underlying assets. And in other words, the price increase of SCHD shows an overall decrease of capital yield over the past decade or so, mostly because the quantitative easing has increased the, the amount of capital flowing around without necessarily magically propping up the yields of those assets. Investors with specific goals might find SEHD very appealing. Like, for example, people who want to have a stable and increasing dividend yield might like, um, might like SEHD very much. In fact, at the end of the day, everything boils down to numbers. In addition to around the 3 to 4% of dividend yields SEHD can give us on a yearly basis, we should also point out that over the course of the past decade, the ETF's price increased by 115%. So it's more than 10% per year ever since its inception. So SEHD is very likely one of the best dividend ETFs in the market right now in terms of price action, in terms of diversification, the yield, and the capital appreciation. Nothing will keep increasing forever and ever and ever, obviously, so definitely take that with a grain of salt. This is only what we have seen so far, and the past performance does not like guarantee future results. So 
Nevertheless, SCHD has been able to deliver very high returns over the past few years, and this is clearly a good pick for most return-seeking portfolios. Like, I would say return-seeking portfolios. So right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power raising the input costs and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk-return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties and social unrests will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness, of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the US market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. With that being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. Now, overall, 
I would say that SEHD presents itself as a very good, appealing and promising investment option for people who are looking for stability, uh, cash flows, so income streams, and also a potential for growth. It has a focus on dividends, that is true. It offers investors exposure to a diversified portfolio of high-quality U.S.-based dividend-paying stocks. The reason why I emphasize on U.S.-based dividend-paying companies is because this is probably a major safe haven for capital seeking stability. Okay, In the world, in its current state, not a lot of countries can offer like a very stable environment in which they can guarantee that your money is probably in good hands. Like there are a lot of elements um, that may cause a lot of like strain or conflicts, but so far that is not the case for North America. One of the standout features of SEHD is its reputation as a good dividend ETF with a good company um, that you know originates it with a stable outlook, and also it has. A lot of um, like it has a lot of trust and established presence, shall we say, amongst like the institutional investors. But nevertheless, a significant chunk of SCHD is within the hands of retail investors. The fact that it has very low expenses, and we're talking Vanguard level expenses, is another appealing aspect for investors because. It can significantly impact your overall returns over a few decades, making SEHD a very cost-effective option for those looking to maximize their investment gains and to prepare for their retirement. There are also potentials to see price appreciations like we have indicated previously. Lots of those companies are large caps. A lot of those companies may rise with the tide, and a lot of those companies have enough clout and popularity on them like as a standalone choice for people to get interested in them. So this is why overall I would say that it shouldn't be a surprise that SEHD is going to rise along with potential arrivals or at least the certainty of decreasing interest rates. So personally I would say that SEHD presents a compelling investment opportunity for investors seeking stable returns, low expenses, and a diversified portfolio. It has a focus on dividend-paying stocks, and it offers investors the potential for consistent income streams and long-term capital appreciation. As investors continue to prioritize safety and stability over volatility, ETFs like SDHD are likely to remain popular choices for income and stability-oriented investors. I would recommend to gradually build up your position over a period of, you know, multiple months or even beyond like a year, and to hold at least eight to ten percent of your portfolio into dividend ETFs such as SEHD.